Today, I wanted to chat a bit about my road situation and uh, ask for your thoughts on it. I live in the rural Rocky Mountains, way out in the sticks. And I live on this road that's about four or five miles long. And there are three homesteads on that road who live there year round. The one at the very end of the road, the, the road is actually named after those folks. They, they moved here and homesteaded in 1940. And uh, they live there, uh, Ma and Pa, and then adult son and wife and their two kids live on their ranch uh, all year long. Next, coming back toward me, toward civilization, there's a retired couple who live right next to us. And, and then there's our place. And then it's another two miles up to the to the next road, the county road. Well, the road in front of our house is a county road as well. And it's only a little over 200 yards from our house. Got about seven, 800 feet of driveway that I plow with my plow truck every winter. And we get a lot of snow. So I'll go out half a dozen or a dozen times a winter and spend anywhere from three or four hours to a full day or several full days in a row plowing the snow from my driveway. But I only have to go to the end of my driveway. Right beyond my driveway, right beyond it, that's the county road. Well, it turns out there are these things you build when you're snow plowing. For those of you who don't know this, I'm a little bit jealous. But when the wind blows as hard as it does where we live, it blows the snow. You, you almost have more snow covering your driveway from blowing snow than from falling snow. So there'll be a, a nice clear driveway after I get done. And then we'll have a night of 30, 35 mile an hour winds and driveway is right back again, uh, drifts all over it and got to go plow it out again. So it's, it's a lot of work, but I've only got to do my little section. And the county does right up there. Is that right? There are only three, you know, four families on this whole five mile stretch of road. Is it right that taxpayers, if there was such a thing, people who have money stolen from them, they call it taxation. Is it really okay that the city folk have to pay for all this work? hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year worth of work to keep that county road plowed out to my driveway. So what does a voluntarist do when we ponder like this? Heck, the the county plow guy, awesome guy. I actually many years ago, his grandfather was like a grandfather to me, and I just been out of touch with this guy. Back when I knew him, he was about three years old, so <laughs> never was in contact with him until about a week ago. We had a good conversation and <clears throat> said, by golly, yeah, we did know each other. You know, I, I knew your grandpa, and I'd seen him when he was a little little kid. But it turns out he's a plow guy, and he comes in our driveway and builds these snow catches. And that's what I'm talking about. If you don't know what these are, good for you. Uh, but you, you build a snow catch, and it's basically just plowing out about two runs worth uh, – 15 20 feet wide of snow and just making a bank on either side and then as the the snow blows across as it drifts it kind of comes across and it catches in those uh those catchers those snow catchers and then beyond those on the downwind side is the driveway and that helps keep the driveway from getting covered in as much snow well the county road is just downwind from our property and so the county guy comes along and says, hey, Shepard, uh, can we come on with our big equipment? We'll come in through your driveway and build a snow catcher across our, our front hay field or pasture there uh, that borders the, the county road. Can I build snow catchers there? And I said, of course you can. Absolutely. You know, I want to help my neighbors down the road. That's just being a good neighbor. And as he comes in my driveway, he has to clear it out, which is a big help getting the kind of that entrance area done. Uh, that's that's really helpful. And I've, I have this big, long preamble to get to this point. Is this right? Where is the line? If I'm going to say 
this is not right that the the other people the city folk pay for all of our snow removal for just three four families down here it's ridiculous to do this in the winter and 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 it shouldn't i i'm not going to accept this anymore should i start a petition <laughs> not going to make me real popular with my neighbors but i'm not here to be popular I'm here to do the right thing should i start that petition should i just stop driving where i think it's reasonable to have the government do something if the government's in this horrible system we have if they're the ones that are going to do the plowing it would make sense for them to plow up to a certain point that's what the taxes are paying for that's why we do it okay but in most systems you wouldn't have this much work that's just kind of absorbed uh, we're getting all this benefit i don't know um where along the road would I tell them to stop or, or where would I just, we would take snowmobiles from our property up to where we could park our cars. Would we do that two miles up to the main road? Well, there are only another dozen families that are impacted there. So if we went up beyond that two mile stretch to the other area, it'd be about two or th two miles up to where there's a whole kit and caboodle of folks. There've got to be two or three dozen people that live there year round in that subdivision, well, should the county stop there? And since they don't, should I just say on principle, we'll take our snow machines up there and just make multiple trips back and forth with groceries? Or do I accept that we live in a, a, a junky system and there are a lot of things that are wasteful, bloated, inefficient, and sometimes they really hurt me. Sometimes they just cause me great pain. And sometimes, as in this case, <laughs> I'm the one who benefits. So come tax season, and then they take tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, depending on the year, they take that money from me. I do my best to minimize that damage. Well, then, then I'm losing. And then with the road, I'm winning. Flying on an airplane. Well, I don't do it anymore since they, I don't trust that the mask thing isn't going to snap back into effect at some point and I'd be stuck somewhere. But back in the day, you know, you take an airplane and you go on a three hour trip across the country and you're paying 500 bucks. There's no way that works out economically. Obviously, there's some big subsidies the airlines are getting. I took advantage of those. I'd still fly. Where's that line? Seems like there's a lot of gray area in there. And then that brings up the question, since we're sitting here having a casual conversation, I don't imagine you're in a hurry. If you are, you, this might go on another five minutes or so. So I don't know it's going to be worth it to you. Just kind of pondering, thinking out loud here, hoping it's making you think and you'll have some good feedback for me. But where are those lines? Where do we draw the line? Or do we just say, we live in the world we live in, and we will minimally have contact with the governments. We will do things as well as we can within reason. It sounds like that's wishy-washy mushy. It sounds like I'm doing a Romney thing here. But what would it look like if I said, by golly, I am not going to have anything to do with government anymore i guess i wouldn't go out into I, I could go into the national forest except the government has claimed it they don't own it like we know they don't own it you can't just steal something and then say you own it but they claim control over it so would that be the place i should go to to live in my little cave that i dig with a well i can't use a shovel to dig it dig it because that shovel was transported on highways with a, by a commercial driver who had a commercial driver's license. So I, I shouldn't be using a shovel if I'm really going to not have anything to do with government. So whether it's on National Forest or Bureau of Land Management or private land, find a, a rancher who says, yeah, you know, I've got 10,000 acres. Yeah, go up on that little knoll and live there. I don't care. Just don't gonna catch anything on fire. Well, the rancher's paying taxes on his property. I can't be there because that would be having something to do with government. 
I don't know. What would I eat? I can't grow food because I'd have to go out on the roads to get the seeds because in these parts, stuff doesn't just grow up. It wouldn't be time to grow things here anyway. I guess I could do some potatoes maybe. So I could live on just potatoes and just the animals that walk across. I can't use a gun or, or ammunition. You know, that stuff's all controlled by the government. Unless I had something old a muzzle loader or something from before the government came about an old 1600s something or whatever like it, it would be pretty cumbersome so then then we say okay well within reason what could i do to have less interaction with the government well within reason is a huge area that comes down to how far along that road do i take a snow machine before I jump into our car and then drive on government roads? Or do I just say, hey, working out in my favor this time, I'll take it and go along with it. What is the, what is the person who isn't living for the ends, doesn't want anything he didn't earn? I, I want all the money that comes into my pocket, all the good, all the bad. I want it to be earned. I don't want any hand-me-outs, any involuntary hand-me-outs. Those of you listening who just want to voluntarily donate a bunch of money, that's okay. Uh, but it's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to earn my way in life. Where is that line? How much are we involved in government? Tell me what you think. And if you enjoy this kind of video where we just kind of chit chat and ponder and I bring up some points that maybe uh, you haven't thought about in a few weeks or you know, it helps you, you kind of think about it and form your own opinions. If this is helpful to you, I'd sure love it if you'd subscribe. Uh, hit that little bell for notifications. Then you'll know when I'm off blabbering again and you can jump in here and join and maybe offer your feedback. Thank you kindly for taking time.